today's video, we're going to be breaking down the decision making workflow that keeps construction projects on schedule and on budget. And I'm revealing some basic key steps that a lot of project teams overlook, even on multi million dollar projects. So let's go. Okay, so this is essentially problem solving 101, which is such a major part of any project management or superintendent role. We can help foster success through smart, timely, and accurate decision making. And in fact, wrong or delayed decisions can not only be stressful, but both costly and have negative impacts on a job site. So if you've ever been stuck working through an answer, waiting on an answer, or chasing someone down for an approval, this workflow should help fix that. So let's start with step one, which is identifying the root cause of the issue. Now, this seems fairly straightforward, but the biggest problem I see is that people focus on symptoms of the issue, which are secondary effects of the root cause, and then they try to correct those symptoms versus fixing the root cause itself. So how do we identify the root cause of the issue? Well, we simply need to ask ourselves why over and over again, and then work backwards from where we're at. So why are we at this point or how did we get here? Well. Let's say X, Y, and Z happen. Well, the X, Y, and Z are potential symptoms. So we'll look at each of these and let's say we determine that Z is a symptom of the issue and X and Y are non-issues. So why did Z happen? Well, Z happened because A or B happened. So then we go one step further and figure out that A is just another symptom of the issue while B may be the root cause. So we'll keep going down this path of questioning until we fully understand why the problem exists and we can clearly define the course of the issue and how it originated. For example, let's say there was an RFI that was written, answered, but not distributed to the correct people. Well, the symptom could be that something was built incorrectly, or the symptom could be that there was no pricing submitted for the change in the documents based on the RFI, Therefore, the RFI change is now tracking behind schedule. We may think that the original root cause was that the RFI failed to go out. But what if the software failed and it wasn't distributed properly? Or what if the distribution list had the wrong email address? We just need to keep asking why until we actually figure out what that root cause is. Okay, step two, which is research and gathering information. So before involving a bunch of other people, we need to further define the root cause with documentation or additional backup information. We would do this by looking at the drawings, reading the specifications, looking at a contract, reviewing schedules, checking submittals or previous RFIs, and really anything else that could have caused this issue to begin with. Now this step is essentially to roadmap the root cause through the various symptoms with clear and identifiable information. Over time and with experience, you'll start identifying these issues before they become issues. But let's use an example of something already in motion. Let's say our plumber is going to install a six inch drain pipe. However, the wall has already been framed at four inches. Well, we clearly know that the pipe is not going to fit in the wall. So we start asking our whys by looking at the plumbing drawings. And we see a six inch drain pipe on the plumbing drawings, which is sized per code. Then we're gonna go look at the architectural drawings and we see that the wall type is called out to be four inches. So we've identified via the drawings as our information backup that the issue's root cause is a coordination problem between the architectural and the plumbing drawings. Now, this is where most people get into trouble by trying to proceed with a resolution to an issue at this stage in the process. Someone could say, let's just increase the wall size or decrease the pipe size without thinking about or knowing all the downstream impacts that this or either of these decisions may have. Now, the better approach is to digest all the options via a brainstorming effort while also thinking further down in the construction project to see what the impacts of that decision might be. An okay but quick decision today might be a terrible and costly decision in the future. So instead, let's document everything by pulling the specific drawings, compiling the information, and move on to step three. So step three is assigning the decision owner. By identifying the root cause and compiling all the backup information, the next step is to determine who has ownership of making a decision regarding the next steps. 
Now, this could be you, it could be the owner, it could be a subcontractor, it could be a vendor, or it could be the architect and engineers, depending on what the issue is. We can primarily determine the issue and the assignee of the issue by roles and responsibilities outlined in the contract documents. Since this previous example was a design issue that we found in the drawings, we'd make the determination that this information requires an answer of the architect and the plumbing engineer or a combination of both. So when we assign this issue or this information to the decision owner, that's someone else, it's best to provide them all this gathered info that we previously compiled. Clearly state who is responsible to provide an answer, and then clearly describe the issue with supporting information. Include any potential impacts of that issue, whether it be cost or schedule, and include when the decision needs to be answered by, all in a way that is not going to require follow-up questions as best as possible. Leaving out information while trying to obtain an answer is going to take longer and it's going to slow down the decision-making process. So moving on to step four, it's time to analyze the information, the options, and provide a decision. Now, some issues are larger than others. Some issues may have multiple answers. Maybe all those answers have pros and cons. So it's best to list out all the options, each pro and con, which is how you'd get to achieve the best decision moving forward. Let's say option A saves cost and option B saves time, but A loses time while B increases cost. For example, let's say the critical path of our schedule has fallen behind by a day due to an unforeseen condition, but there is an opportunity to make up that day by working a small amount of overtime by paying a little bit more. Does the additional cost of the overtime make sense in order to make up that time? Well, looking back at our gathered information from the previous step, let's say that the owner has previously stated that the project can extend by five days from its original completion date without a concern. Well, this is where the information would be presented to the owner and the owner would be able to provide a decision by weighing the cost versus the schedule improvement. And then this takes us to step five, where we're gonna document and distribute this decision. This is the most crucial step because what is a decision worth if nobody is aware of what decision's been made? This is honestly where most decision making falls apart which is not distributing that decision to the appropriate parties. In the last example, let's say that the owner did decide to pay a little bit more to maintain those extra five days and keep the schedule back on track, but that information wasn't communicated to the contractor that needed to provide the overtime. Well, we solved the original issue, but now we've created yet a new issue. Unfortunately, this time the issue's ownership has moved from the owner to the contractor. So in summary, identify the root cause, not the symptom, gather information, assign it to the correct and responsible party with a clearly defined deadline, weigh the pros and cons, and then distribute that decision accordingly in a timely manner. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I approach all potential issues and real issues using this workflow while managing construction projects. So I hope this can be a benefit to you as well. In an upcoming video, I'm going to be talking a bit more about some tools and methods to stay organized because there could be multiple things going on and any small issue could potentially slip between the cracks and become a very large issue down the road if not tracked properly. So if you want to make sure that doesn't happen to you, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you're up to date on content just like this. And as always, be better, build better, and bye for now.